let let's go to tight end before we go to wide receiver because yeah. I know wide receiver is just going to be the most talked about and speculative yeah. position. So tight end, I think, is pretty straightforward. Absolutely, you have Ben Sims, superstar. I think he could be All Big Twelve first team this year. Mm-hmm. I think there's a very high chance of that. I think Drake Dabney, people are sleeping on. Uh, outside of kind of the people that know about Baylor, Dabney's going to be a very good red zone weapon for this team. And then behind them, you have young guys who are, I think, very good. Cody Mladinka, Kelsey Johnson especially, kind of fits a niche that they really need uh, at that H-back role. I think Kelsey's just growing so quickly, which is great to see. And I love the depth they've built at this position, and it's only getting better with the 2023 class. Yeah, I think the guy coming in 2023, Matthew Kloffenstein, is... um, I, I did a quick, I was just kind of curious now that the class is getting so big. I did like little basic ratings for each prospect. And I think it's Austin Novoselic and Matthew Kloffenstein is probably the two best prospects in this class. Um, but anyway, I think that's where I have, yeah, I have him as a 90, but he's right there with like Sean Tompkins. I have as a 90 yeah, as well. Yeah. But. I mean, I mean, he's awesome. So, but obviously not going to play this year and won't even yeah. be on campus yet. Um, so the two main guys, as you said, Ben Sims, Drake Dabney, I just did a three-part series, probably like 10,000 total words on these guys. So obviously I have a lot to say about him. But I think Ben Sims is like, if he doesn't get hurt and he just continues doing what he's doing, he's going to be like a fourth, fifth, sixth round draft pick, which considering his athleticism and considering his size limitations, I mean, he's not small, but he's, you know, 6'3", 6'4", 255, which isn't huge by NFL standards. I think that's a massive win for him. And as you said, I think, if he if he continues on the trajectory he's on, he's a first team All Big Twelve guy, um, which is really just kind of solidifies what's going to be an awesome career for him. He's just he does everything well. He doesn't do anything poorly. He's become a good blocker out of high school. He was mostly a receiver, but now um, he's really become tough. I was really surprised when I watched the tape last year that. Um, the blocking from them to Ben Simpson, Drake Dabney last year wasn't great earlier in the year, but it was almost exclusively because of mental mistakes. Um, they were playing good and physical basically from the get go. And then when you get to the time, like by the time they're playing in the Ole Miss game, by the time they're playing in the big 12 title game, I mean, they were just bodying dudes. Um, Drake Dabney is an awesome blocker. Um, and <laughs> I think, uh, I heard he has like 37 inch arms or something like yeah. that. Like it's, it's, it's truly ridiculous, which, uh, you know, arm length isn't just a stat on the page. There's a reason it's important. And when you have those long of arms, it allows you to kind of connect with those defensive ends and lock them up and keep them off of you. And as you said, I think he'll be a good red zone target because when you're six, six, like he is, mm-hmm. and then you have 37 inch arms, that means you can throw the ball really high in the air and uh, make plays for you. So, yeah, I think the offense is really going to revolve around these two guys because just like it's really rare to kind of return all your offensive linemen and rely on veteran offensive linemen, how many college – I mean, you could probably count on one team – excuse me, on one hand, how many college football teams have two veteran all-around tight ends on their roster. It's just – it just doesn't happen very often. Um, Obviously, the depth is a little bit thin – um, as you mentioned, the other two guys are Cody Miladenka and um, and LaKelsey Johnson. Uh, Miladenka needs another year or two. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't want him to see the field this year much. Um, and he was hurt all spring. Yeah, so. uh, yeah. He was definitely more of like an upside guy out of high school. Kelsey just turned 18, but he, he looked ready to play college ball a year ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you said, he fits a niche for them, which is like that H-back position where he'll be lined up in the backfield. I mean, he's probably as skilled as a receiver as like Armani Winfield. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. Like not quite that high, but like he's really naturally really skilled. skilled. Yeah. Um, and I think if, I, you know, he's not going to be as good as Drake Dabney or Ben Sims this year, but if either one of those guys is hurt for a few game stretch, I'm not going to sweat it because he's going to be really good. And I think he's going to be so good that they're going to have some three tight end packages just to get him on the field. Yeah, I could see that. I, I also think that my expectations for Ben Sims are pretty through the roof. I, I really think he's going to have like a 700 yard, seven touchdown type season, which would kind of put him in the range of like, a similar impact as like Mark Andrews yeah. pre his junior year. Cause Mark Andrews had almost a thousand yards yeah. receiving as a junior. I don't see that in the cards for Ben just because but that's mostly offensive style. It right. That more you're throwing the ball a lot more. You're playing more tempo, uh, but 700 yards, seven touchdowns, oh, yeah. which would be all big 12 first team. 
type numbers, I could definitely see that in the cards for. And I think he probably leads the team in receptions this year. Would be my best guess. Man, Uh, I mean, I know that. I mean, it's tough. Like tough, but I. I, you know, I think it's between him, Monterey, and whoever wins that outside I, receiver yeah. spot. I lean more towards Monterey, I think, just because we saw shape and check down a lot last mm-hmm. year. And so I can see that because I think the outside guy maybe won't have as many catches, but will probably have more yards and more significant catches, gotcha. touchdowns. That's how I view it, at least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Ben is just such a good all-around player. And I think what you're really going to see from him this year that you didn't see, that we saw glimpses of last year is, okay, it's third and seven. The defense is going to be dropping seven or eight guys in coverage, and so you know everyone's going to be covered. So who can you throw to the ball to that that can win despite a DB being right on them? And I think that's going to be Ben Sims. You know, you rely on a good touch pass. You rely on an accurate pass from Blake, and you know that a a guy that's a skilled route runner like Ben is is going to be able to shield his body from the defensive back to make kind of those clutch – those clutch receptions. Yeah, and his hands looked a lot better this spring. He made some tough grabs yeah, he did. during the spring game. 